This video is sponsored by Tracklib. Yo, what's up? How are you doing? Today I am bringing out the OctaTrack. This has kind of been my simple setup as of late, and man, have I forgotten how much I miss this thing. It's just so weird and quirky. The OT is just, it's in a league of its own when it comes to just weird resampling and stuff. So I'll be using the DigiTac mainly for drum duties, the OctaTrack for hopefully chopping up something decent and just kind of seeing where it goes. We'll try like track from scratch-ish, you know? Um, and I actually found a sample that I've been messing with for a bit on today's video sponsor, Tracklib. In case you're not familiar, Tracklib is super dope. I've been using them for a while now. And it's basically an online record store for sampling. They provide tons of original tracks and multi-tracks from real artists to sample. And they do this by handling the process of clearing and licensing the samples when you're ready to release your music, but they allow you to download and mess with the sounds and samples beforehand. And the best part about this is it actually doesn't break the bank. If you just go to the plans and pricings, the base plan starts at six bucks a month and you don't pay any licensing fees if you're not releasing any music with the samples that you have downloaded. So I see Tracklib as kind of this weird save in this space since they provide working musicians, especially from days past, with ways to get paid for their work while working with the newer generation, us, of music makers, right? And I take a ton of inspiration from, um, I guess, well, I take a ton of inspiration and samples from the past. So this is kind of like my guilt-free way of knowing that, one, I'm in the clear, and two, of just saying thanks. So the sample I want to be working with today this is like my favorite section. Uh, it's going to be, actually check this out. They got a ton of Frank Duke samples up, which is kind of insane. If you're not familiar with Frank Dukes, any big time artists, like especially in the top 40s realm, has sampled Frank Dukes one way or another. And I've saved a ton of these to my, listen to this. He just makes full tracks specifically for the reason for people to sample them and Tracklib got his library, insanity. But what I want to focus on today is this sample here by Hizuru Floating Flowers. And if I play this, I can actually jump over here and turn on the loop player. Let me get to the part that I really like, right? Is it here? That's right here. That note, this note. Oh, let me go to four loops, my bad. So that note. This note is dope. It's got a BPM detector, that note, and then this little. I love that. And then there's a bass note there, boom, boom, but I'm gonna skip that for now. So I found this in the avant-garde section. It's actually really cool. It tells you what key you're in, BPM, when it was released, all this stuff, what license class it's in. So this, to actually fully license it and use it would be 50 bucks, and then you kind of do a royalty split from there on. And a bunch of tracks, like are in different, um, there's A, B, and C, and I wanna say like more than majority is in the class C, which is great for me. It's basically like digging through the dollar bin and you just find some dope records. But anyway, I want this sample. I'm gonna hit download. It will start downloading. Come on, slow internet. There it is. Boom, 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 gives you the whole thing. And now I got it here. Oh, I was trying to press space bar on the Octatrack. <laughs> Oops. All right, so before I get too lost in the sauce, if Tracklib is something that interests you, be sure to use the link in the description below to get a 30-day free trial and 15 free credits. That's like three months worth of credits and double what the usual sign-up offer is. And lastly, you can cancel anytime. All right, let's make some house music. So on the Octatrack, as of late, I've just been using the record buffer in hold mode just because it allows me to quickly grab any sample just by holding down the thing. We're coming in AB, which is just kind of feeding whatever my computer is playing into here. I have loop off, record length to max because I'm doing hold. I'm not doing any um, like quantized recording, right? And because I sampled this from Tracklib with the loop player on, it actually gives me a perfect four bar loop of the section I wanted without having to download the entire song, but you can download the entire song if you want. So easily enough, I can just press this and it's gonna start recording. I'm gonna stop, but I'm gonna go ahead and press this and then just hit space bar to grab the sample. You can see that. Uh, 
coming in here. Awesome. So what I want to do now is I just want to go and edit this. Man, after using the OT for a while, it's nice to, to be back into it because I'm starting to learn like everything that I learn new. Hold on. How do I say this? Everything that I learned new from the last time I used this is now my foundation, right? So now I'm learning to explore a bit more based off of the foundation that I had before, if that makes sense. So cool, we have this here. Let me go to our start point. I'm gonna just zoom in. And basically this has kind of been the, I did a video on this, actually this video in case you're curious, on my like quick uh, chopping that I do on the OT. And basically all it result, revolves around is having a perfect start and end point. I actually think I want it to end there. And I'm just gonna go ahead and crop to this selection and once I have the perfect start and end point of four bars, I know that I have one, two, three, four sounds that I want to for sure slice. So if I go to slice, I can say, create a slice grid of just four slices. Yep, sure. So now let me make sure I have this set to slice mode on and I'll put our slices. Oh, this is a bunch of crazy stuff. One thing that's annoying about the Octatrack, if I hit this slice and I want to zoom in to edit that start point and I hit the pad, the slice again, it zooms back out. Come on, Electron. Let's see. Oh my God. You could, the way around this is you hold down function and you hit yes. Cool. So this one's a little off. I'm gonna go back a little bit, zoom in. And then, that one's fine because there's just kind of like an attack to it. Let's do very simple. Oh, this sample's super loud, my bad. Okay, cool. So I'm gonna turn the level down of this. That's kind of cool. So we'll go 64 steps. <laughs> Mess up on the last one. Let's go fix that real quick. This one I want to actually be slice. Two, I believe. Cool. Quantize this like a mother. This I want to be here, out of here. That's fine. That is super early. So this step here, erase that and I'll paste it here. Okay, cool. That's a little loud. Right, so that's decent. We'll go here. Pro tip, distortion in the filter. I've probably said this before, especially on drums or like an incoming drum signal. Do I wanna do that right now? Hold on, this is, this is what I wanna show you. So forget going into the interface. I'm gonna go from, for the DigiTac, I'm gonna just go straight into C and D. And I'll just say this track here, actually we'll go into seven. Seven will be a through track and we'll say CD. We'll put this here at the beginning to open up its track. Let me turn this down. Okay, cool. So we're here. We'll go to mix and gain CD.
right? So now I can also say project um, control audio track 8B master track. And then I can also just throw a compressor on here. Kind of squash it a little bit. Okay, so this is what I wanted to show you. If you run a drum machine into your Octatrack, on the filter page, if you just turn up the distortion here, not adding the lo-fi or distortion or anything like that, or gain whatever it's called in the effects, this one's way crunchier. Listen to this. Yes, let me turn this down. Because then it all becomes kind of like this gain staging thing. To say I like that, but it's just slamming way too hard. Just turn the track as a whole down. Right? So now I can also say, let's emphasize the highs, but kind of take some of the air out. I want to say the Q, <laughs> only go to the low pass filter, and I'm going to do 24 dB pull. And if I wanted to kind of emphasize and give it a little bit of a, a pumping feeling, I can go like this, right? And you're probably wondering, why would you do that? You're just opening up the through track, you can actually use this as an envelope trigger, right? Because say we were to go like this and our amp envelope hold was all the way down, this will give it like a gated effect, right? Again. Right, but that's not what I want. That's not what I'm trying to show you. What I want to show you is if I go here, I can turn up the envelope depth of these triggers going to the filter cutoff, which is kind of manipulating the sound signal of our drums. Does that make sense? So basically, if I turn up depth, see how it falls back down? I'm going to copy this page, paste, paste, paste. There's one that I'm missing. There it is. So turning the decay down. Now, it's just the kick that has the, right? We can move this around though. There, if we wanted to get really dramatic with this, I'll mute this track for now. This is to our drums, but I just want it super subtle. Just a little kiss of this. Like that. Because watch, with zero. But then if I go and let's just, let's just assign this to, a, to five. That's with it and then without it. With it. Right, and then I want to turn this up a little bit. Without it. With it. I want to adjust the decay on this. I even think five is a little too much. Three is good. So because I don't want this to have to be permanently assigned to this scene, I'm just gonna clear this and just set it three manually. We'll go back to this track, turn this way down. Let me grab a quick sound from the Pro 3. So again, what's great here is I'm gonna go to track two and I have it set to hold. Boom, I got it, it's now here. You probably can't see it. Let me turn slices, okay, slices are off. AED, edit, there's the sound. I just want to normalize. I've been sleeping on the normalize selection thing for a hot minute. Now I can go in here, zoom in. Look at that beautiful wave shape. Hey buddy, missed ya. That's fine. 
crop to selection, yes. I feel like the cropping thing kind of got instilled in me with the NPCs just trying to save a uh, sample space. So this is here, this is on this recording now. It's probably gonna be really loud, let me. That's cool. I'm gonna add a little bit of attack just to get rid of that quick pop at the beginning. Wow, literally one does it. Same thing, Q's gonna go just to the low pass, 24. Cool. Oh, I still got this receiving uh, MIDI notes, my bad. So I know that I am in A minor, which is basically a C major, which is perfect for me. So I just make sure I hit all the illuminated. Typical kind of breakdown y thing. I'm gonna go here, clear this, clear that. So on B, what do I want? I could do the regular, just go to our master and just turn up this, right? Because that kind of creates the, what you would expect to happen. But let's get a little more intricate with it. I wanna actually do this on a per track basis. So I want the bass line. That's cool. And then I also want its amp. Just kind of fall off a little bit. And on the master, we'll add a little bit of, um, what should we add? Man, I always do this. I'll do the compressor here. And on, on this one, I'll do the, the space or uh, dark reverb as a send. So we'll say here, let's just get this right. Ratio high, threshold kind of down. Okay, cool. So we're still here. I want to say mix for this. There. Our drums, we can go ahead and high pass these out. And then we'll open up the filter. And we'll also, instead of bringing this up, we'll also bring it down a little. Oh, you know what we can also do? Because we have these triggers set up on our drums, I'm gonna go ahead and say down. What's up, what's up with some attack on this? That just like cancels out the kick, right? That's pretty cool. I do wish the reverb tailed out a little longer. So I'm gonna just...
Dude, this bass is hitting way too hard, to be honest. I think it's this chorus. Let me turn the mix down on the chorus. There we go. So what else can we do with this? I mean, this is kind of like the bare bones basics of where I kind of get most of the ideas from here. I'll probably just start like, um, like resampling it and re chopping that up, if that makes any sense. And just, just seeing where else I could push this because I'll just start playing with the scenes. Right. So like on this track here, what's cool is because we have the slices playing, no matter what I do to the rate, the slice points are always going to be right at those transients. So if I go to our rate now, yo, this actually sounds really tight. I'm going to do the same for this to 48. So look, I can go here and say, set this to 48. We'll set this to 48 as well. And then for the drums, which is here, I'll say amp. We'll do that same thing we did before. Turn this down, a little bit of attack. Weird little breakdowny thing. I'll go ahead and copy this scene and I'll paste it here. And then on this part, I'll remove all the, um, the drum stuff that I just did by pressing this. So we can go, okay, check this out. So this is 13, this is 15. I'm gonna go to 14, which is nothing. This, I'll say rate back up. I'll leave it at this. You know what, I'm gonna leave it at this. So yeah, I appreciate you again. Uh, check out TrackLib in case you're interested in actually sampling real music. Thank you for coming by. Thank you for kicking it. Forgive me for flying through on this thing. I get a little too excited sometimes. And uh, yeah, it's always good to see you as always. Thank you TrackLib for supporting me and letting me do what I love to do, which is just mess around with samplers and samples. Until the next one, I hope to see you again. You already know the drill. Share the love, share the knowledge. Knowledge is power, peace. Now let's check out how this lands. Hopefully I got this right. So we got this cool little do, 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 do. Right? And then we can say, mute that, go to this track, turn up some of the reverb. at this part in the song. Then we're gonna break down into regular drums with a new... Oh, okay, we got it, we got this. I wanted to break down into the drums of the new pitch down version, but with regular drums. So from the top, now that we got our reverb set up. I just forgot to unmute it, honestly, that's it. All right, here we go. Nope, nope, uh-uh, one more time. Here we go, now we're onto something. So I'm gonna use this to mute it. Let's just say mute. on 13. Yeah, there it is.